back to my channel, Button and Pip. I'm Adele and my channel is all about my dressmaking journey. Now, I totally understand I'm a little bit late with my December makes video, but let me just say, I only feel like now I'm coming up to breathe for air. Um, if you don't know, yes, we're in lockdown again and we've gone, well, the schools have closed, so we've gone full remote learning, which is just taking so much of my time. So today I'm going to pop on, talk about what I've got, uh, what I've been sewing in December and also a little sneaky peek at some of the lovely gifts that I got for Christmas. Now, I spoke about this dress in my last video and I knew this was going to be absolutely gorgeous and it was. So this was actually my Christmas day dress. So it is the Myosotis. I've got the pattern. It's the Deer and Doe myosotis dress in this gorgeous um lady mcelroy fabric from minerva you can see it now i'm gonna be co totally honest about this dress so this isn't a new dress pattern this pattern has been out i think almost for two years and i've seen a lot of my friends making it i've seen it on my instagram feeds and every time i've looked at it i've gone no, it won't suit me. It will not suit me. And I don't know, it's been a slow grower on me. And I think it was my friend Vicky that she put up her three versions of this dress that she's made. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to have a go. And after making my indigo, my Tilly and Buttons indigo dresses, the, the larger oversized dresses are actually really comfortable to wear. So I got this in uh, the Black Friday sale directly from Dear and Doe and they do do it as a PDF but I just really wanted the pattern, um, a paper pattern and it was reduced Black Friday. So as soon as it came and I got this fabric for my Minerva Makes blog uh, post that's on their uh, feed, I'll put a description, well in the description box I'll put a link directly to it and oh, yes, yes, it turned out exactly right. I expected it to and I'm already dreaming of making a second. I can't believe actually how much have I've done a U-turn on this dress. So let me talk about this dress. So it's an oversized. Now, when I did my measurements with the Deer and Doe, it puts me at 40 to 42. Okay, and I did a lot of research based on this pattern and about whether it's true to size or whether you can size down. Now, like I've just said a moment ago, I don't want the oversized sort of smock look. So I did a bit of research to check that if I went down a size, it wouldn't affect me around the shoulders, or around the bust. So I made a 38, a direct 38 everywhere. I didn't uh, take it in or change any sizes. I did a uh, direct 38 and it's just perfect. I'm really glad I did the 38. So as you can see, the shoulders are still perfectly fitting. My bust start fits me correctly. I didn't have to re move down this bust start and I did anticipate that I might have to put ties in this, but I didn't need to because having the 38 comes up almost like an empire line. It's not right on your waist, but as you can see there, there isn't a great deal of room, but enough room to make it comfortable. So yeah, it came together lovely and I've gone full on ruffles. So I've done the ruffle on the sleeve and I've done the full length skirt, which normally would be just the, the straight skirt and then the ruffle as well, because the pattern, let me show you on the back. The pattern on the back, it has, if you've got the ruffle, you have the shorter skirt. Whereas if you have the, without the ruffle, you use the longer piece, but I wanted it to be midi length. So I went for the longer and the ruffle and I am a lover of a ruffle now. It's a midi length and I love it absolutely love it now let me tell you what i kind of cheated on so these aren't real buttons okay <laughs> um i messaged my friend vicky and i said vicky can, will i be able to get this on and off without having to do buttons and she went yeah yeah you will and i was like right if i can get it on and off without putting buttonholes in why am i going to stress myself out by putting this through the machine and it going wrong because it always goes wrong with buttonholes so there are no buttonholes these i've just sewn it up where the buttonhole should be and put some lovely yellow buttons on. I think I maybe could have gone away with another one. If I want to wear this for work, I might have to put another button there. But yes, I think that worked really well. 
The only tricky part was this colour. So it's a bit like a mandarin colour. And the instructions put it on the wrong way round. Oh, I can't remember now without looking, but I'm sure it's a very different method to how I normally put on collars. And I can't work it out. So yes, you put the inside in first and then fold it out and then do the uh, stitch in the ditch. But I'm not great with my stitch in the ditch. So I put the outside on first, folded it in, and then I've just done a hand stitch to catch that. But I have seen a great um, alternative to having this collar, which is having a facing. Um, so I think I actually might do that on the next one. So then I don't have to stress of that and this will ripple really weird really quickly but yes absolutely gorgeous so i put a twirl in if i haven't done so yet but i definitely want to make another and this is the fabric that i'm going to use so i got this from so Haley jane so this would have been in her subscription box i apologize i don't know which subscription box month it is but sometimes when she's got surplus, she actually just sells them on in her outlet part of store. So I picked some of this up. I think it's two metres or two and a half metres. So I've already laid it out, saw if I could actually get this, uh, tried to work out if I could get this dress. And I can if I make the shorter skirt with the ruffle. So that is my plan. But I've got a little bit of a problem. I don't know where this pattern piece has gone for... The sleeve i've got all my oh, i don't know and my husband's working up in my sewing room now that we're all working from home so i'm not been managing to go in there to have a good tidy up to find it so i do need a good look before i find that but i'm hoping by the end of january i will have another myosotis okay so never judge uh, a pattern by the cover i'm in love with it now absolutely love it Right, I've got to stop gushing over this dress, but I love it. In December was all about comfort and it had to be a pair of pyjamas. So I showed this fabric in my last video, my November makes and Craft and Cotton Co contacted me and gifted me some fabric and they sent me some of this beautiful navy floral jersey so I got three meters of this and I knew as soon as it arrived in the parcel that I wanted to make a pair of pajamas because um well I must have known lockdown was coming again and how important pajamas were going to be so I've gone back to my trusty patterns that I use quite regularly when making pajamas so this is the Stella joggers from the Tilly and the Button stretch book. I've actually never made the hoodie. I've only ever made the trousers. And these remind me a lot of the True Bias Hudson pants. I've got the Hudson pants pattern for my husband and I'm a little bit hesitant to buy it for me as a, a female one because I think it might just be exactly the same as this Stella joggers. So anyway, there we've got the Stella joggers with a little cuff. And then I was in real two minds of what top to wear to make with this. And I sort of had an afternoon sewing, uh, only an afternoon free. And I thought, right, what top would be easy and quick to make? So I went with the Molly top from Sew Over It, the ebook, the City Break ebook. And it's a really easy two piece, well, three pieces include the neckband t shirt. It's got a grown on sleeve, so I haven't got to worry about setting in that sleeve or anything like that or raglan. It just came up together so quickly. And I did the classic as soon as I'd sewn it, I got changed straight into my pajamas and I love them. Who doesn't want a nice pair of pajamas? Other bits of sewing that I've done is I've been doing a lot for my sewing street demonstrations. So I did one in December. I'll put photos up of the little romper that I made. That was really cute in some nice unicorn jersey and also the wrap tie dress in this sort of coral orangey um chiffon fabric that would have been lovely on a red carpet or for a special occasion like that now also this saturday i'm going on sewing street so i thought i might give you a little bit of a sneaky peek on the samples that i've made and uh so cute so cute so let me first of all show you this so this is the dress that i'll be making 
on the show this Saturday. So it's a princess scene dress, midi length, and then it has a cold shoulder part there. So let me show you the pattern. So it's this pattern here, the new look N6652 pattern. So I've made this version as the sample. And on the day, I'm going to be doing the sleeveless version for my um, demonstration whilst on the show in some nice pink viscose. But it's really nice because this has got princess seams and it fits the body really nicely. So I made this as a size 12. I don't get to keep these, unfortunately. That's what I've been making for that one. And then this one. <gasps> it's so cute. So it's a little grey toddler coat. Okay. Well, let's just say a couple of years ago, if I said that I was going to make a coat, I would have had to plan it meticulously and really take every moment. Um, after making my nice halo coat and then my avid seamstress uh, blazer, I feel pretty confident now making a lined coat. And look how cute this one is. And I'm going to, I managed to get my friend's little boy to model it. So I popped it over last week after it was finished, asked her if she wouldn't mind taking some photos of him in it. And just so cute. So, so cute. So this is some boiled wool and it's lined. And again, there is an option to put buttons on this, but I've gone poppers. I've gone poppers because I don't want it to be destroyed going through the machine because I'm not sure if this will go through my machine so well. So this is actually from this book, which is the So Adorable Classic Clothes for Boys and Girls. And it only goes ages one, two or three. So I can't make any of this for the girls, but I'll be demonstrating this coat on the show in uh, some more linen. It's like a heavyweight linen blue, which would look really nice for a little girl, maybe just to dress up a, a little dress. Oh, so cute. I absolutely love that. And I actually remember having a little grey coat when I was about five. So it took me back when I was making this. And look, little pockets to put little worms and little treasures and little stones in. But that, I can't wait. That's so cute. Now, other things. So Santa was very good this year. I think the screenshots and the links directly to Santa to tell him what I wanted worked. So first of all, you know that I've actually sort of taken on, well, I've jumped, well, should I say jumped? I've dipped my toe in the water of knitting and I'm very, very early on and crochet. And there's my crochet blanket from before. But I asked Santa to give me a full set of crochet hooks. I absolutely love these. So I had this um, little crochet organiser wallet for a while. My husband bought it me for my birthday and now I've filled it up with some lovely crochet hooks with proper handles because these ones, which I've got, they're nice, but they just start to hurt my hands when I'm using them. So I've got some nice ones with nice handles. Can't wait to use them. And my main present was this. So I'm still on the very, very start of my knitting journey and I'm not confident enough yet to choose the wool and the pattern to make sure they exactly match up. So We Are Knitters um, is a company within Germany. They're online. They've got all patterns and the kits that match the patterns perfectly. So you can choose what colour wool, um, there's different sorts of garments. So I chose an, an easy kit and it was the signage jumper. But I didn't want those colours. So I chose my own colours, which you can do. And I've gone for this bottle, sort of green, green bottle colour, um, green and white and grey. So as you can see already, I, this nips up, knits up so easily. I've just been doing this in front of the TV, in front of the fire. But as you can see, I've already done the front and the back and check out this seam. I can't believe I've put that seam together so nicely. And I'm currently on the shoulder. So I'm on the shoulder part there. So this time I chose with the needles because I wanted some nice quality chunky needles. And let me show you what the instructions look like then. So it's the first time I've ever ordered 
from We Are Knitters. So I have to say, I was a bit like when I used to do online fabric shopping. I wasn't sure what it would feel like or how it would be when it came. But I have to say, I have been gushing over it because the wool is just so soft. So it's 100% wool and they've got lots of different the ones in their range. This is the petite wool and it's just so squishy. So this, oh, I can't wait to snuggle up in this. And I just hope actually we have a bit of a rubbish spring so I can wear it all the time. <laughs> that sounds really bad, doesn't it? But I just want to wear my jumper. So this is the booklet that comes with it and it gives you a chart that you follow with the colour changes. First time I've ever changed colour when I've been knitting. So I have to say the back isn't as pretty or as neat as the front, but then no one's going to look at the back, are they? And then it's got all of the tips in there. So I highly recommend these. They aren't exactly the cheapest kits out there. And I know there's probably a lot of cheaper versions, but I just have to say, I'm really impressed with the quality of the wool. So <laughs> Boxing Day, I received a little bit of money for Christmas. So I went back on We Are Knitters and they had a little sale. So from the sale, I bought myself another jumper. Check out this one. How lovely is this jumper going to be? And this time I've actually gone for the, uh, ooh, sorry, the colours that it suggests on the recommended pattern. So that came and then I thought, well, I've got the pattern for both of those that I might actually just be able to make a plain one. So not the change, but just use the actual, um, the gauge, how many stitches and so on, to actually just do a plain jumper. And this wool is amazing. So this wool is called Marshmallow, okay? And as you can see, it's like a yellowy, and then it has these lovely pink and blue changes in the color as you go through the wool. I'm not very technical with this, I, sorry, sorry. But I can't wait to make that up. Now, the thing is, do I make another jumper and then have three knitted jumpers or do I do some crocheting and have the most snuggliest blanket? So I've got six of these. Each of these are 100 grams. I wonder if anyone could help me whether 600 grams of wool, if I did a nice big granny square blanket, how big would that blanket be? Hmm. I'm not sure. Right, I'm still undecided on what to do with that, but I've now <laughs> been adding to my fabric stash, but also to now my wool stash. So my husband needs to come out of that sewing room and let me in so I can do something. Right, okay, so that is December and Christmas over and done with. Um, yeah, I'm still okay, I'm still okay. Just life is a bit crazy at the moment. And I know it is for everyone because it's just mind-boggling how um how the lockdown makes you feel and i i've actually got more work to do every day with the girls homeschooling keeping on top of the house and schoolwork and everything like that but we, we can we'll get through it we'll get through it we're enjoying lots of family time lots of nice walks right i hope everybody is safe and well in this crazy time and thank you so much for coming along and watching another vlog of mine. If you like my channel, please subscribe, like my uh, videos and have a look back at all my other makes that I've made. Right, 2021, what are you holding for me? What's the plans for this year? I don't know. Right, let's go. <laughs> all right, have a lovely day and see you soon. Bye.